Delighted. All right, the most watched program in the history of the Fox News Channel, the first GOP debate delivering a record 24 million viewers, making it the highest rated primary debate in television history. That's more than this year's NBA Finals average of 19.9 million viewers. How incredible is that? The numbers from last night's program tripling the largest audience for any previous debate. It's poised to be the highest non-sports cable program of all time. A big congratulations to our sister network. Well done. And a big night for the GOP. The viewers took to social media by storm. When it came to Twitter, billionaire Donald Trump got the most traction, followed by Ben Carson and Rand Paul. What does the digital campaign trail mean for the 2016 election? Joining me now, Natalie Andrews, Wall Street Journal social media editor, Sabrina and Jessica are back as well. Natalie, what do you make of it? I mean, I think one of the most interesting things is that Ben Carson was mentioned second. And I felt watching it through so much of it that, that he got lost, you know, that he, like he said, he wasn't sure he was going to get the chance to talk again. And then he made some pretty great statements at the end that got a lot of attention. It's amazing to me that he was number two. Is it surprising to you? I think what it shows is how much we're going to see in digital advertising in 2016. Facebook and Twitter have a lot bigger, ad, more robust advertising platforms than they had in 2012. And it really gives these campaigns a whole new way to take the second screen and give their reach. The Carson campaign gained 100,000 fans on Facebook last night. It's crazy to do in one day. And they were the most talked about. I think we'll be able to see in the next few days or when financial disclosures come out yeah. how much they spent to really get there and whether or not they'll be able to mobilize that into volunteers, into votes, into donors, yes. into yes. what they need to actually make it be a campaign. So I, I'm glad that you said that because, Sabrina, as somebody in television, you know, we always wonder what is it all worth? Getting people talking and chatting. Right. It can be good, it can be bad. I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're making traction in the way you want, or does it? What do you think? Right. I mean, what, what, what makes it good for the candidate? What do they want to see? Well, it certainly gives new definition to sort of jumping on the bandwagon, right? Because you can gain 100,000 followers in one night, but if these aren't people who are going to be influencers, so to speak, who are going to be highly engaged, who are going to influence their circles of people, then it's not really anything that's going to be sort of long-term having an impact. There have been some initial studies on whether or not social media can have an impact on the day of an election, for instance. I think there's a lot more research that ought to be done, and we're going to have to sort of see, is it simply enough to have people, or is it the message that they're saying about the candidate? There's yeah. so much that we can still look into about this. No, and Jessica, I ask you sort of the same question. I mean, we always wonder, having people chatting on social media and Facebook and Twitter, does it translate into viewers? And for voters, you know, it's, this, it's sort of the same question for the candidates. Having people talking about you just because everybody's tweeting about Donald Trump, does that necessarily translate into votes for him? I'm not sure, and we're really far out from the election, which is kind of great that we'll be able to analyze this over the next year. But I think what uh, I wanted to point out is well, the Donald primary. Trump... Yeah. Yeah. Well, the primaries, but it, yeah. it's going to be, we have to look at it as the long haul if we're analyzing trends in social media for elections in full. But I totally mm -hmm. take the point about the primaries being part of that. But if we look at the top two, those are two outsiders in politics, right? Donald Trump and Ben yeah. Carson. Right. Two people we don't, they don't have a record to speak of, and they have other information about him that voters want to know about. So I think, especially with Ben Carson, you know, he said something right off the bat that I thought was brilliant, which is to be president, you need to be smart, right? He's, he said yeah. it's about intellect. And I think, at least from what I was seeing about what people were talking about, that that really struck a chord with people and they wanted to know more. Yes, yeah. he messed up on some of the factual things about foreign policy, but he gets that a president needs to be smart. Yeah. And, and I think that's really what drove okay. that. Natalie, what do, you, what do you think is right. the most important thing, Natalie, uh, uh, that bo uh, that uh, candidate, sorry, want to turn this chatter into? Is it money? Right. Is it buzz? Or is it votes? Right now, what's the most important thing? Is buzz maybe the most important? I think right now it's that transition from buzz to a campaign structure. So from buzz to volunteers, buzz to raising donations, buzz to building that email list. And they're really going to, especially the next few months as they're building the primary, they're targeting the early primary states. I mean, Jindal said their whole, the Jindal campaign told me their whole strategy was targeting Twitter followers in early primary states. 
I didn't see that on Twitter last night, but again, I'm not in an early primary state, so I didn't see those ads. So we'll see where it goes, I think, in the next few months as to if they're really able to harness social media and make that yeah. work and whether or not it's okay. a, they're able to really do that. We're going to leave it there. Thanks. Sorry. I'm so sorry. We're out of time. We'll come back, though. Thanks so much.